Okay, so we did our and we lab on loudness perception. The purpose of the lab is to determine the correlation between perceived loudness and the actual loudness of various frequencies and study how our senses lie to us. So our hypothesis was that as the frequency of a tone got farther away from 1000 hertz, which is sort of like a bass range, it's sort of right around where you hear the most accurately, then the perceived loudness is going to go down, even if the actual loudness, like the amplitude of the wave is the same, you're going to, like, it'll sound quieter to you. Oh. <laughs> okay, so the background is, so what we based our lab off for the fletcher munson curves, or the equal loudness contours, so that's this graph over here, and so each line represents equal loudness, so like, yeah, so for example, like 60, this is 60 um, decibels, so it's like at 1,000, it will be equal to 60 decibels, but then like to sound the same like loudness, the decibels of like 20 hertz is like somewhere up here. And um, so the frequency is the number of crests of a wave moving past a given point in a given unit of time, and then this is the units for sort of decibels, sound pressure levels. And then, yeah, each line corresponds to a certain intensity and signifies how loud various frequencies need to be to be perceivably matched in density. Okay. You skipped. I don't know. Sorry. Oh no. <laughs> okay, so this is like the ear, and we focused on the um, cochlea, which is the inner ear, and that's um, where all the frequencies are. So the way you hear is you have all these little hairs in your ear, and then they have different sort of resonant frequencies. So when you hear like a thousand hertz tone plays, the oh, thousand hertz little hairs sort of resonate, and then that's how you hear. And with hearing loss, you lose your higher frequencies first because they're farther out. They're the ones that are like hit first yeah. at the entrance. This is like out, and then it goes. And like, oh, the hairs, they can't be regrown once they're destroyed. And so, like, an interesting fact is birds, they never lose their hearing because the hairs can regrow, but for humans, they never do. So once you lose a frequency, it's gone. But we did have a test subject with some hearing loss, so you can sort of see what that looks like. Yeah, okay. Wait, okay, yeah, the procedure. Um, All right, so what we did was, we had a setup that was playing two different tones, the same loudness through different, like, sort of ears. So there was a pair of headphones, and the right one was playing 1,000 hertz just all the time. And then the other one was playing different frequencies, and they would start out at the same amplitude. And then we would have the test subject change the amplitude of the left ear until it sounded the same. So just sort of a demonstration of how it sort of changes loudness is this video. I don't know if the sound's on for Is the sound on? I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, it's, at the beginning, it's... Oh, yeah, it's on. Super. Started at sort of the lower limit of human hearing and ended at the upper limit. Yeah, the, the range is uh, 20 hertz to 20,000. So this is our data. Um, so the slope signifies what the equal loudness contour slope signifies, which is the a person's perception of equal loudness. And so. <coughs> so every point on this curve would sound the same loudness but like how high it is on the y-axis is the amplitude, so how loud it actually is. And then this is an example of hearing loss. Fun fact, this is yeah. Sawyer. Shut he up. has gotten his <laughs> tubes removed multiple times, so he has a lot of scarring in his ears, which is probably why he has hearing loss. But, um, so this is, at the, uh, this is a line of a thousand, and so this is right here, the thousand, so it should be zero here, because that's how we, um, we said a thousand hertz is zero for zero gain, and then um, here also it should be zero, like crossing, because it goes down and then it goes back up, and then yeah, so that's Sawyer. 
ears. <laughs> and this is the graph of our air. So the blue is the actual. Um, okay, that's what it should be. Yeah, that's what it should be. And then red is ours. Hey guys, I'm sorry, just for one minute. This is uh, Teacher Appreciation Week, so we want to appreciate Dr. Um, Schuster for being given a big round of applause. Thanks, everybody. That's really nice. That's a nice little addition to your video. Yeah, I'll cut that out. Go find me. Go to my GoFundMe. Really helps the channel. A little plug. Do you have a Bluetooth channel? Like an extra channel? All right, so back to it. So the blue is the actual, like, professionally done, sort of established equal atmosphere, and then the red is the averages of our test subjects. So it's pretty close in some of them. Like, okay. That's amazing! But as you can see, like towards the lower and higher ranges, um, it got a little messed up, but that's okay. <laughs> and our conclusion is that our study generally supports um, previously established findings on the subject of perceived loudness, and um, so not all frequencies sounds are perceived to be the same loudness just by being played at the same loudness, and it's harder to hear um, the sounds at the end of human hearing, the spectrum of human hearing, and our senses lie to us. And then one more thing we found is that our hypothesis wasn't entirely correct. So there is a sort of space where it goes from 1,000, then it starts to appear quieter, but then it appears to get louder. And that's in the range, like those frequencies that appear louder are in the range of like human voice. So I think that's why, or maybe our data is just being. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> we have time for one question. Does anyone have a question? Oh, Ben okay. Keller? Can you describe what that curve was in the beginning? I really did not understand. Okay. Yeah, it took like three hours of looking at All right, so on the x-axis you have different frequencies, so that's sort of self-explanatory. And then up on the y-axis you have decibels, so that's like the amplitude of the wave. Basically it's how loud it actually is. So, but the thing, it, it's sort of hard to read, but the red line here, the blue line's been the same. But, so every tone along that red line sounds the same, and then where it is on the y axis shows how high you have to play it. So, like, right here would sound the same as, like, a 20 or right there. Do you get it? Yep. All right. Uh, I have one final question. On your graph of this same thing where you matched it up, the spacings on the baseline were um, equivalent, but here I'm seeing a spacing of 90 and then 900 and then 9,000. Can you explain why that is? Um, because we don't really even figure out how to get it to space differently on Logger Pro. So we Can you describe, do you know what this spacing is? What that's called? I don't know what it's called. It's logarithmic spacing. So it's on a log scale, which enables you to see some of the structure more easily. A lot of physics ends up being exponentially dependent, and if we make it in the log scale, we can see it much more clearly. Yeah, with decibels. Exactly. Thanks again.